Welcome to this tutorial on how to lay out the pages for a print book using InDesign Creative Cloud 2018. Hopefully this will save you $10 or so per page in typesetting fees. I'm going to move fairly briskly so please use stop and rewind when necessary. You create a new document by clicking on create new. Go up to print if these options aren't showing. Look at all the presets. Today I'm going to choose A5 to keep things simple and they are the dimensions up there in the right. If you want to change the units you can see where to do that which is a nice advance on last year. Portrait orientation, facing pages, very important to click this box so there are left and right facing pages. I'm going to stick in 100 pages for this exercise and check primary text frame, that's going to help with auto flow. One column so that's easy. The margins I'm going to put up to 16 and then I'm going to uncheck that link and put up the bottom and inside to 18 millimeters, just so you can see how to do that. Down below, I'm not going to use bleed or slug. Bleed is like an overhang if I had uh, blocks of color or images that went right to the edge of the page. Uh, if you did, you'd probably want to put in three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. Uh, and if you want to change the size of the box, that's how you do it. Hit create and there you have it, the first page showing and all the pages in this page palette displayed. If they're not showing, go up to window and you can see the option there, pages to show it. But they should all be in there, the 100 pages. And I've already got a Word file of Franz Kafka's novella, The Metamorphosis. It's in Word, I could copy and paste it, but I'm going to close this and instead import the whole file, all the text by going File and then Place or Control D, Command D for Mac users. Click on the file, click Open, and you'll see around the cursor the tiny text. Click just inside the text area with a purple margin there. Hold down Shift if it doesn't automatically flow and see how on the right here all the pages it's flowed in. If that didn't happen, just hit uh, Control Z, Undo or Command Z on Mac and then hold down Shift and put it in. Now just looking through the pages you can see the text has gone to page 70 so I'll get rid of those excess pages later. That's okay for the time being. I'm going to double click on page one and then uh, go to type and paragraph styles. Now what I'm going to do with this is set up styles a bit like in Word how you're heading one heading two and you can see normals come through there. I'm going to click on the type tool in the toolbox on the left then click in the opening paragraph or just somewhere there right click on normal and then left click edit normal to bring up this dialog box now the style name i'm going to use is normal based on no paragraph style i'm going to use the basic character formats that uh, i'll use georgia that's a nice simple easy serif font there it is, Georgia. Uh, font style, just keep it regular for the moment. And the size, I'll put up to 11.5. Uh, That'll be a reasonable size for reading. You don't want it too big or too small. I'm not going to use the default letting. I'll put that up a bit to 15. That's the spacing between the lines. And it is pronounced letting uh, after the strips of lead that went between the rows of type in the old days. Now, alignment left justified. I know Word only has justify or left, but here this will mean left and right line uh, margins are really sharp and the bottom line will be to the left. Now I'm putting in a first line indent of five millimeters. So the first line of every paragraph will be indented. Now see how that's happened, but it's still, there's spaces between paragraphs. It's still not quite right. It's Times New Roman. No, I didn't set that and it's not 12 points. So that happens, click back in the paragraph, click normal again. Okay, now that's changed to what I wanted, Georgia 11.5. Notice in the second paragraph, I'm I'm going to click there again and um, I've, uh, I'm going to click normal uh, to make it what I want. And notice how the italics did stay there. It wasn't a dream. That's a second sentence in the second paragraph. Now, if you really wanted to get rid of all the formatting, you'd hold down Alt and then click. But I'm going to do all the text by using Select All or Control A. And then I'm going to click on the normal uh, paragraph style again and you can see that it's all changed now to Georgia 11.5. So if you want to keep those italics don't use or don't hold down alt before you click on that. Go back to page one and now we're going to look at this first paragraph. It shouldn't have an indentation on the first paragraph in a chapter. So at the top right of the paragraph styles box, see where I'm clicking? Top right, select new paragraph style and if you could call this 
uh, let's call it first para. You could call it anything you want, and it just shows you the flexibility. We're going to base that on the normal style. So you can base it on other styles, but normal just means we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I can go straight. So all the basic uh, character formats are the same. Now I'm going to go straight to indent and spacing. I'm I'm going to get rid of that first line indent, bring it down to zero, click OK. Now at first it doesn't appear to have changed anything, and I've got these. Uh, I'm going to click back on the first paragraph. Oh, I'll get rid of this CC library as it's turned up. Um, I click on first paragraph and you see how the indentation disappeared. Now I can do that for all the uh, openings of chapters, but why don't I set up the chapter heading first? So go up to the top right of the paragraph styles box, click on those four little lines again. And this time, uh, if you could just call it heading one, I know that's a fairly boring one, but that, that's very handy to do. And then click on basic character formats. Uh, not sticking with Georgia, let's use something simple like uh, uh, Calibri will do or Calibri if you prefer that pronunciation. Make this one bold and the size at say 16 points. The letting, we can keep that the same, but indents and spacing, I'm going to change that. I'm going to center this and then I'm going to get rid of that first line indentation. I don't want that. Click OK. Now you'll see, oh, this has popped up again. You'll see uh, the cursor's on number one. I'm going to click heading one. OK. And now it's gone into place. I'm going to get rid of the uh, title there. We don't want that there. And I'm going to go to type and show hidden characters and see how all the paragraph marks show up. If you don't want them, you don't have to have them. But I like to see them and I'm going to put five paragraph marks above and below this. You shouldn't really do it this way. See how at the top right I'm clicking space before paragraph and space after paragraph. I'm putting them both up to seven mils. Now, a lot of designers would say you should do it that way. Well, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to put them both back to zero, but you can see the option. If you want to use it, you can. Now, edit and find and change will mean that I can go to the second chapter, there's only three chapters. So I've just done, you know, find the first digit two and there it is. And it's very easy to now apply the heading one style. So you click on heading one, and then I'm gonna put in those extra paragraph marks, five at the top, five below, and then don't forget to click on the first paragraph and click on the first paragraph style. See the indentation's gone. I'm gonna go uh, find and change or control F. It's good there's only three chapters in this, isn't there? So do the same things, put in heading one, put the five paragraph marks at the top, the five below, and then click on the first paragraph and hit first paragraph. And there you have it. So we've done all those style changes very quickly. And I'm just going to move the scroll bar down the bottom so you can see how it looks now. And we'll go up a little bit and just say, okay, well, it's starting to look like a, uh, the start of a chapter of a book. And looking down here, you'll see the text has gone right down to page 60. So really from page 61 down, we don't need any more. I'm just going to use a scroll bar across the bottom there to uh, have a look at that. All right, so if you double click on page 61, I'd like to get rid of 61 to 100. So hold down shift and click 100. You've got to hold down shift so you get all those blue pages. Then top right of the pages palette, delete the pages. So that was top right of the pages palette, those four little lines. And we're just down to, uh, it ends at page 60. Scroll back up to the top and double click back on page one. And there we are. Now, there are a few other things we've got to do before this is going to be like a regular book. Uh, we need page numbers. Now, up here, the A master. Double click on the left page of the A master. Now, they are above the regular pages, these master pages. Click on the type tool and then click and drag a text box down the bottom. We're going to put automatic page numbering in this. Click on the black arrow at the top if you want to move that text box around. So I'm just going to move it down a bit. The number will be a bit too close to the text there. By the way, you can click on the ruler at the top and click and drag a guide down or click on the uh, left hand ruler and uh, drag a guide across. You can do that very accurately there. If you can't see the rulers, just go to view and then you've got show and hide rulers and that's they can be very handy devices to use. All right. Now, Click back on the type tool, click in the box. Now go type, insert special character, markers and current page numbers. Now you probably think it's going to turn up as a number and it turns up as an eight. That's okay. Have a look at, see, 
the number two has popped up on page two. Notice number three hasn't got a number yet because we haven't done an automatic page number for that. So before I do, I'm going to make that uh, Calibri to unify it with the heading font. I'm going to make it 11 points, slightly smaller uh, than the body text. I'm going to center a line you see up near the top middle where I did that. Now, hold and shift and alt, shift and alt or shift and option if you're a Mac user and just slide it across. So, uh, and that's going to save you doing it all, all again. Now have a look, say page three. So the automatic page numbering is there. Now I'm going to put some headers at the top of the page. So I'm going to double click on the A master left hand page, go to the type tool, click and drag a text box. Now a header of course is at the top of the page. It's optional. You certainly don't want to do uh, a bit, one as big as this, but I just saved that before on the clipboard. So I'll make that a little bit smaller. And uh, instead of using Georgia, I'll use Calibri or Calibri uh, just for a little bit of unity because I've already used that for the chapter headings and I'll just find it there and make it a lot smaller, perhaps down at about 10 points will do for the moment. And you'll see the way it's, uh, I, I've got it in bold. I'm going to make it regular. That's how you change it there. And I left a line it for the moment, but you see how it's got on the first line indentation. That's a hangover from the, uh, what I was doing earlier. So make sure there's none of that, then you can center it. Okay, so that's looking much better now. Click on the black arrow. Now hold down Shift and Alt like we did earlier or Shift and Option on Mac. Just slide it across. It saves you putting all that in again. If you click on the Type tool, you can go back and change the title to the author name because you don't want to repeat the title or have two headers the same. So I'll put in Franz Kafka's name who wrote the metamorphosis. And you see how it looks in the pages now? Okay, yeah, the headers are up there. You know what, I think they're a bit too close to the top of the page. So I'll just look at it by clicking on the bottom of the toolbox and clicking preview. So you click and hold down at the bottom of the preview box to see it without all those guides. Yeah, I'm going to move this down a bit. I'm going to highlight the metamorphosis, move it down a few clicks. And then you can see with Franz Kafka, if I want to click and drag those media guides all the way across, or just those guides, uh, hold down control and then drag it down. You see, I just moved it, the guide there without actually moving the box. So I'll try that again and move the box down. So they're now lined up. And yeah, that looks a bit better. Just they're not so close to the top of the page. So that's a couple of tools you can play with there if you want to line things up. Let's look at this now in preview again. So click and hold down in the bottom of the toolbox there. So you can see the pages are now starting to look like a finished book. We just need to insert a few more pages at the start. You could put pages at the end if you want. Now double click on page one and I'm going to insert six preliminary pages by clicking at the top right of the pages box. So I get insert pages. I'm going to insert six before page one. And when you've done that, click OK. You can see the new six pages. So they'll have things like the title page and the imprint page. And there they are put in there. You can put ones at the end as well if you'd like. Now I'm going to number the, uh, the, the all of them in Roman numerals. Now you're going to think, well, why would you do that? And this is how you do it through uh, layout, numbering and section options and choose the Roman numerals. Now you'll be thinking, hey, why did you do that? I want the regular numbers there, uh, not uh, V11 down the bottom. We'll go back to layout and numbering and section options and then make sure start section is checked and then start the page numbering at one and change the style back to regular. Then click OK and you'll see from page one onwards, it's the, the regular numbers. Now, the reason why you do that is because the preliminary pages are meant to be Roman numerals. That's the convention. Now, you notice on the chapter heading page, we've got Franz Kafka at the top. You really do want to get rid of that uh, on the chapter opening pages. So we're going to set up a new master and the new master top right of the pages palette where we've clicked before, click on new master and then select based on the A master. This is so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Then click OK and see up in the master pages area, there's another master, the B master based on the A master. OK, now let's double click on that and you'll see, OK, it's still got the metamorphosis at the top and Franz Kafka and the page numbers. They've turned to B instead of A. But I want to get rid of those headers. I don't want them on the B master page. So click at the top right of the pages palette, override all master page items. 
Now click on the black arrow, click and then delete. Now if you try and do it on the other one, it's not going to work uh, because you can click that again, but unless you've selected, yep, the right hand B master, it's not going to work. So click the top right, override all master page items, click on it, now delete it and you've got rid of it. Okay, well that doesn't seem to have changed all much except it's got rid of it. Until you click on the right hand B master, because you're going down to a right page, click and just drag, Bingo, it's gone. So let's go down to the other chapter openings and get rid of those headers on those opening pages. This is a left-hand page, so click the left-hand B master, click and drag, and it's gone. And then we'll go to chapter three, do the same thing, left B master, click and drag, drop it in, voila, the header is gone. We're nearly there now. We, I'm going to use the None Masters on the first three preliminary pages. See how I'm clicking and dragging them down? That's to get rid of the header and the page numbers. But okay, look, I'm going to use the B Master on the preliminary page for just so you leave that Roman numeral there. You might have more uh, uh, pre prelim pages than me, but I'm going to get uh, rid of the um, uh, headers on those ones. So we are pretty much ready to go now. We've got it all all the way that I'd like it. So I'm going to do file and save, give it a name. Now you, this is going to save you about $10 a page or so on typesetting if you do this. And um, it's all laid out like a book. I'm just going to look at it and preview to give more, give you more of an impression. It does look like, like a book. So if you want more videos on InDesign and things like how to insert images or blocks of color, you might like to check out the other options on this channel, IndieBook Publishing with you and Mitchell. But for now, thank you very much for watching.